forward here. Testing one, two, three. Say something, guys. Hey, hey how's it going, Tim? Uh, perfect. All right. All right. Well, hello. Welcome to uh, this interview. Um, I'm your host, Tim Mai, we, uh, and we have with us Ryan Francois and Michael Donlin. Uh, with us and uh, Ryan and Michael are partners in the business uh, out in the uh, Iowa market, Des Moines, Iowa, and doing 20 deals a year, mostly flips, some wholesale deals, some buy and hold with a uh, seven plex, a couple of seven plex that they're doing right now. So I'm really excited to do this interview with them. They're going to share with us their top 10 tips for doing 10, uh, 20 deals a year. So welcome, Ryan. Welcome, Michael. Hey, thanks a lot, Tim. Thanks for having us, Tim. Awesome. All right. Uh, why don't we start out with, you know, if you guys can share with us a little bit about you and how you got started in real estate investing. Yeah, absolutely. So Michael and I are about a year out from Iowa State University and uh, we studied engineering there, but really had no interest in going into the, the corporate world. Uh, so we really always knew we were going to start our own business and found real estate as a way to do that very quickly and, you know, follow a proven path and, and get in right away and become profitable very soon. Yeah, so uh, we both split up after college, did our own thing, and then uh, came back with about a year after college, and then decided, you know, now was as good as time as any to, uh, you know, to start our own business, to do our own thing, and we haven't looked back since. That's awesome. Now you guys are super young. So how long? I mean, how long has it been since you started this uh, real estate investing? All right. Looks like we're having connection uh, issues here. They uh, their office is out in this coffee shop, and you know, and so their Wi-Fi might, uh, you know, might might, uh, might be a little low. So we'll wait until they come back online. We started. All right, can you hear us, Tim? I can hear you now. I can hear you now. You cut out for a little bit there. You, you... Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so so when... I, I think it was just saying we've been in business about ten months. Uh, so we started in October. We were 23 at the time, and we've since both turned 24. Nice. Wow. I, you know, I wish I was as responsible as you guys are at 24 years old. I was still partying at 24. <laughs> yeah, we still have. Our oh time. yeah, we like to have a good time. But <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, Ten. That's awesome. Ten months ago, and this year you're already, you know, doing 20 deals. That's that's phenomenal. So. Hey, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so so, every yeah, day. so so share with us like what um what has been helping you guys to like get off the ground so quickly? You know, some people it's been you know, I mean they took years before they even did their first deal. So um yeah. yeah. Talk to us. Yeah, I mean we're in a kind of unique position in that we don't have a lot of responsibilities outside of our business. You know, we're both right out of school, we never took on a full job, we don't have families to support, and so that's definitely been helpful. Um, but I would say ma the main key to our success is really just kind of determination and that work ethic to every single day to keep attacking, keep pushing forward, uh, you know, and, and we do put in long hours, you know, more than someone with a family could afford, mm. but it's making the most of those hours that you're putting in towards the business every single day that, that I think has separated us. Yeah. I think that and having more hours, right, than anybody else, working more hours. I think also networking, you know, we, we're a part of, you know, Fortune Motors, uh, you know, meeting you, right? Uh, meeting a lot of other local investors in the Des Moines market. I mean, being able to learn from people that have made those mistakes um, on different properties, or you know, buying something they shouldn't have. Learning that from them, um, so that we don't make that mistake. Obviously, we made a bunch of mistakes. Every investor makes mistakes, um, but it's been really awesome to be able to learn from you know, quote unquote, experts in the field uh, at such a young age. I, I think a lot of people don't get that. You know, they 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 learn the hard way, and then when they're thirty, they start doing twenty. Um, we're fortunate enough to where we've met some awesome people along the way that helped us out a lot. That's awesome. Yeah, I, you know, so, so a couple really good tips there I want to point out is number one, like start young when you don't have much responsibilities, right? Yeah. Because then, like you said, you have the time, you have the freedom, you have the flexibility, and you can just go out there and hit it hard. So definitely that's a really great tip. And then the second tip you said is like networking. Like learn from others and you know learn from your mentors, from other investors, because you know you're gonna learn it one way or the other. You're gonna either learn it through the school of hot knocks, right, or 
you know, you learn it through someone else's mistakes that, that been there, yeah. done that. So awesome. You guys are super smart already at, at such a <laughs> young age. So very Thank cool. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, I, I, I know you share that, you, well, you share with me anyways, the audience don't know that. Uh, but so share with them, like what types of deals that you do, how you do, how do you decide when to rehab, when to wholesale, when to buy and hold? Yeah, I mean, we're very focused on rehabs primarily. Uh, that's, you know, we, we both studied construction and architecture, and so we understand that process and get a lot of satisfaction out of the actual process of managing a, a rehab. Um, that's our main focus, and we've really early on found our niche in historic homes. So we have a few zip codes that we really focus on. We want to be the master of that area um, and, you know, really control that market. So historic homes close to downtown, doing a modern update on those for young buyers is the niche that we found very early on because we know that market. A lot of the people moving into Des Moines are people that are our age or close to our age. So we really understand that and we can deliver an end product that's tailored towards that buyer. And I think in addition to that, there, there are a lot of a lot of other investors that don't like that market, right? They don't want the headache of a hundred-year-old home with not tube wiring, or plaster, or you know, all the other things that go go along with a hundred-year-old home. Um, and we like that because our profit margins are bigger than a lot of other investors. It is more of a headache, but we get the satisfaction out of you know being able to take something that has that old eclectic charm and bringing it you know together with this this cool modern kitchen or bathroom. And then you know we, we sell it for above market value, whereas another investor would probably come in and um, do a little bit less with the design and, and keep less of the charm, mm -hmm. and wouldn't be pull the, the values that we pull out of the areas that, that we market in. That's awesome. That's super smart, and that is a very smart tip. So niching down, right? Niching down into something that very specific that you know well that you love. Like it sounds like you guys love to like you know modernize these historic homes. Um, you know, and, and so, so yeah, like, you know, knit by niching down like that, you also, you gain the advantage of being, you know, maybe the only player or the very like few player in town that do these kind of deals where you can have yeah. others, you know, others that don't do those kind of deals probably sell to you guys too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it, and it works both ways. You know, if we get a deal outside of our core market, we're happy to wholesale that on to another investor and they know that if they find a deal that comes across in our market, it's going to be reciprocal. So. That, that's awesome. Um, so how do you find your deals? So one thing I will admit, we don't have a crazy systemized process where we're pulling in hundreds of leads a, a week or you know a month. Um, a lot of it's just the hustle that, that we go about. You know, we're knocking on doors, we're um, you know, networking with other realtors or other, other neighborhood associations. You know, we found that even going to a neighborhood association, meeting the neighbors, and then getting inside you know, insider's knowledge on the neighborhood, that's been more of our kind of forte, if you want to call it that, or our niche. Um, whereas, you know, you see a lot of other investors that have much more systemized processes where they're throwing out direct mail and all those things. We just haven't really gotten into that yet. Um, we'd love to. Um, it's something that we'll probably work on moving forward. But, you know, just the natural hustle of, of us you know, in these smaller areas that are older areas of town, you mm -hmm. get a lot of people in these areas that don't even list. They don't even list property on the MLS because it's such a tight knit market. You know, you have really strong homeowners associations. So we found that in, in our niche, mm -hmm. it's really well for us to do what we do. Whereas in other parts of town, direct mail, bandit signs, those types of things work great. Um, it's just not, not really our, our niche at this point. So again, kind of, kind of going back to our niche, right? Right. Yeah, and then in addition to the boots on the ground kind of hustle, you know, us us get, getting to know a neighborhood really well, I would say auctions are an area where we've excelled as well. Um, online auctions is one where we've gotten a, quite a few deals actually in the past few months. Um, it's something that not, not many other investors in Des Moines mess with and maybe they don't have the, the cash or the private money that we do to be able to move very quickly like we can. That's awesome. Okay. And um, so online auction, is it through uh, auctions.com or? Auction.com and Pixu are our main two. Habzu, okay, yeah, all right, mm -hmm. um, and then you know, so you, yeah, you mentioned, um, so so realtors boot on the ground, online auctions, any any other method that uh, has like one of your major ones of getting deals? Yeah, I mean, we still keep a good pulse on what's listed and on the MLS as well. We have maybe three or four realtors that are working pretty hard 
uh, that'll send us leads weekly. Um, we'll take a look at a handful of those every week, and it's not something that's been a main lead stream for us, but we always want to keep a pulse on what's coming on board. That's great. Okay. Now, you know, so uh, so you mentioned, I want to go back to what you mentioned about you know, like having cash to be able to act quickly. Are right. you guys using your own cash or using private money? What's going on there? It's exclusively private money right now. Okay. If we, being 24 years old, we don't have a lot of money to play with. <laughs> <laughs> we have you know, student we loans we can, we can give away, but um, yeah, we use primarily private money. We've um, started to actually use banks to refinance. So what we'll do to make our offer really attractive, we'll come in and we'll say, okay, we have a cash offer, you know, no contingency, you know, make it very attractive in some cases. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come in three weeks later after we close and then bring in a bank um, that will then refinance and then we pull our, pull our private money out and it allows us to use our private money more uh, frequently um, because it is more expensive. You know, private money is more expensive than a right. bank. So we kind of try to use this hybrid model of using cash to make it more appealing on the buy side and then moving that cash out so we can then use it on another deal. Right, right. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, and that, that gives me two questions to ask you from there. Number one is, you know, so do you, as far as private money, is it like your rich Uncle Bob or how did you find that uh, private lender? Yeah, yeah it, initially it did start with us reaching out to friends and close family. Mm -hmm. You know, it started with the rich uncles, maybe not so rich, but piecing <laughs> it together from multiple family members. You know, to, to get a couple of deals going. Once you have that track record, we find it much, much easier to raise private money. Um, that network has grown. You know, our sphere of influence has grown. Uh, random people that we'll meet at conferences, local investors here in town will be reaching out. You know, we find that we get people coming to us now asking how they can invest rather than the other way around. That's awesome. Okay. And then uh, your bank. So I, uh, is, it a, is it like a local bank that gives you a kind of a business line of credit type thing? Because... You, you know, yep. these, these homes, you need a lot of uh, remodeling money and stuff like that, so. Yep, totally all, all local, all smaller banks. That are know. able to do the loans in-house is the main thing. Yeah, so they have portfolio loans, so they're not selling them off to Freddie Mac, you know. Freddie Mac, Mac, something <laughs> like that. Um, yeah, they're keeping them in-house, um, so it makes it, they're able to move quicker. You know, we've had loans that have closed in, you know, 15, 20 days um, because they, they keep them in-house and they, you know, just have to make one quick call to the board or to the vice president, and then it gets approved very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And how did you guys go about, you know, establishing that relationship with the bank? Um, and, you know, and yeah, and for them to consider doing these type of loans with you guys? A lot of schmoozing. <laughs> <laughs> it's helped a lot, though, having, you know, this network of investors that we know mm -hmm. and having introductions saying, hey, we know. You know, we know Caleb, we know Bob, we know so and so, um, and then you know that that it, us knowing those types of, of people mm -hmm. uh, gives us credibility to where the bank goes. Oh well, if they know if they're a friend of Caleb, I'm a friend of Caleb, or if I'm a friend of Tim's, you know, they must they must be good investors. Um, we had you know we had one mentor of ours um, that's an investor in the area, basically said if if these guys mess it up, I'll I'll take the loan, um, and the and the bank said okay, well. He'll take the loan if they mess up. Well, of course we'll do it, right? That's and awesome. So like that. I mean, it's just you can't beat it. It's, mm -hmm. it's awesome. That yeah, is awesome. Wow. Going through on what you say you're going to do is one of the keys to any successful business. You know, it's it was us talking to banks in the fall. You know, we didn't even maybe have a deal that we were requesting, but mm -hmm. starting the conversation very early on and saying, hey, here's a deal that's coming up. We already have money raised for it, but here's our first numbers. You know, we we don't have this property yet. We're going to close on it soon. Here's where we think the deer will land, and then following up, you know, keeping them updated a couple months down the road, and finally when the deal closes, and saying not only did we do what we said we were going to do, we went above and beyond, you know, and, and here's all the ways that this project was a success, and here's how we could work together in the future on deals like that. Yeah, I definitely always like to show them deals that they didn't finance, mm -hmm. and then we put a bunch of money, and we go, oh, you could have financed this, yeah. why didn't you? That investor <laughs> payoff line, in the, it's, keep, keep it in there anytime, show yeah. it off. <laughs> I, I love that. That's a great, great idea for sure. And, yeah. and and I love how you guys like, you know, are so like you build your business so much on relationships. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. So you have great like great strong relationships with you know, with everyone you work with from investors to lenders to mentors to banks. Um and and I love you know what you said about like doing what you say you're gonna do and even go above and beyond that 
right? So yeah. that way you, yeah, you begin to show that good track record, uh, you know, with, with them. That's really awesome. Always want to under promise and over deliver whenever possible. Right, right. Yeah, and then I, I take it like on, so your, your typical project, how, how long is your typical project um, of, in terms of like the rehab time and how much um, is a typical project? Yeah, so our projects right now are about two and a half months uh, of rehab primarily. Uh, and they're larger rehabs. You know, a lot of times we're spending more on the rehab than we are on our acquisition. So we're purchasing properties anywhere from forty to one hundred and fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Putting, you know, our, our typical rehab is anywhere from like sixty to ninety thousand right now. Um, but we're increasing the value of the home by oftentimes one hundred, one hundred and twenty, one hundred and forty thousand dollars. So, wow. so we're seeing very large swings, uh -huh. and that's primarily because we're buying in these transitional areas where we can buy on the low comps and sell on the highs. Right. So, and we've also started pre-selling some properties, which is a little bit of a unique approach. Um, that way, we're able to cut down our holding time. Uh -huh. We're only in the property for that two, two and a half months that it takes us to rehab. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we're done with construction, we're closing on the property. So we're working directly with an end buyer to do a custom renovation, and we get it pre-appraised. The so closing is scheduled for as oh, soon as wow. we're done. And as soon as we're done, we're out of there, and it minimizes our hold time and our selling costs by quite a bit. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And what um, what's your strategy to pre-sell? Do you guys do like... 3D drawings and, and put them on the MOS as a 3D drawing? Or how do you sell the buyers on, you know, the vision of what this property will look like? Yeah, we really lean on our realtors for that. Um, at any given time, we want to make sure that on the market, we have at least one listed property that's got a lockbox that people can go. They can see that end product and the level of quality and finish that we go to. Mm -hmm. um, and our realtors will usually sell our pre-sales based on that other house that we finish. So they're walking people through the space. They're able to see it, touch it, feel it, and really experience what our end quality product is like before they walk into the one that smells like cat pee and there's still carpet and junk everywhere, you know, before we've even touched it. Eventually, it'd be sweet to do the, the whole Property Brothers animation. I don't know uh -huh. if you've seen it. Oh, yeah. They're like throwing lawn chairs in. <laughs> right. Uh, putting Random the pool in. Rings, yeah. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> yeah. That, that's awesome. So, and. I mean, that, those are really great tips. Now, the agents that you're using, is is it someone that specialized in that area? As, not really. as far as we know, we're in our market, we're the only ones that are doing a pre-sale model. So there's really not an agent that specializes in that. It's maybe two or three agents that we have a strong relationship with that we've listed with in the past, and they're comfortable with all our quality of work. I see. We do like to use one lender, or we've used one lender in the past that is all right with doing um, kind of a you know, to completion appraisal, right? Um, to where the appraiser comes in, you know, two weeks, a month before construction's done, and then they go through and they say, okay, well, this is what's gonna be done, they do an appraisal, and then they come in literally, you know, a day or two before the close. Mm -hmm. Not all lenders would be okay with that, the one that we use is all right with that, so that that way we can close, the, you know, the day after construction. So. Wow, okay, that's awesome. So, so that's the lender that you refer your buyer to then, right? Yeah. yeah, whenever possible. Yeah. Okay. That's, wow, that's, uh, I, I love that. That's a very, uh, you know, very, like, good way to do it. Very unique, too. No wonder you guys are doing so well. <laughs> um, all right, so, so is ha selling through a real estate agent to find buyers, is that your primary way of selling? Do you do anything else around looking for buyers? We do, yeah. Anytime we acquire a property, we get a big four foot by four foot yard sign out mm -hmm. front. Um, so in certain cases, we've sold a property just based on that. You know, right, right on the sign that says, buy this home today, call us. Sell your home today, call us. So very two clear calls to action. Um, and if someone's interested, they, our website is on there. They take a look and see our active sales. Uh, and, and if they're interested, they reach out that way directly without an agent. And yeah, Two, three days ago, I got a call from a property that we have in Adele, Iowa, just outside of Des Moines, and uh, she was looking to, uh, to potentially do a, a pre-sale with us. She didn't necessarily want that house, but now we're working with her, and we're trying to find her, you know, property in an area that she likes. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're always going to get those, you know, you know, those, those random calls where, you know, hey, I want a pre-sale, or hey, I want this house or that house. You know, it's mm -hmm. just a guessing game of who's going to call next, right? Right. That's awesome. <laughs> 
And and your your four by four, that's pretty big. So your your homeowner association is allowing you to do that? They have so far. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't been taken down yet, but <laughs> I think they like your end product, so they're okay with the sign. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice looking sign too, very, very well designed and <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, we, you know. Um, yeah. If you could, if you could take a picture of that sign, like and like, you know, tag me on my Facebook or something. I really appreciate that, so I can go with this interview. People can see like what that looks like. Yeah, Absolutely. Oh, no, for sure. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, they're, they're bright and yellow too. You want to make it something that somebody driving by is like, wow. You know, it's, it's got to stand out. <laughs> right. They can't miss it. Right. No. <laughs> do, do you? You know? Do Do you put your pictures on it too? Like you? Like you know? So you have two. Good-looking, uh, handsome guy selling this house. All the, all the girls, all the ladies will be coming by checking out the house. It already takes so much of our time just to keep the girls away. We don't want to bring more. <laughs> yeah, something like that. No. We, we thought about doing caricatures, uh, but we, yeah. we, decided, we decided against it. But that would be kind of funny to, to put yeah, a little, little, little cartoon. Like, yeah. Little, 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 little <laughs> yeah, that, that would be fun. Uh, all right, so, um, so, so share with us, what does your, your typical day, right? What does your typical day look like? You know, and um, what are some of the rituals or the habits that you guys um, you know, put into your day to keep yourself productive, keep yourself motivated? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we try and start every day with the 7 a.m. toolbox talk. So right now it's Michael and myself, and we have a full-time project manager that's day-to-day you know, contractor relationships and managing our active job sites. Mm -hmm. um, so three of us try and connect every single day. You know, it's a quick hit, 15 minutes at the beginning of the day. You know, at 7 a.m.? Yeah, 7 a.m. Okay. Yep. Yep. And actually at our favorite coffee shop just behind us here, <laughs> Smoky Row. And, uh, you know, that's very quick. It's like, what are the key things you're working on? What things are you going to absolutely get done that day? And what do you need help with from the rest of the team? Um, from there, we split off, and, and we're very diligent in you know, making sure we all have clearly defined roles and responsibilities. Obviously, there's overlap there, um, but Michael, for the most part, is looking at new leads, acquisitions, you know, um, making sure that we're constantly keeping those streams going, that we always have new deals crossing our plate. Um, I'm doing primarily our design, private money relationships right now, uh, and then also higher level oversight on our project management. And then Jace, our project manager, is on the job sites, talking to subcontractors, making sure the work's getting done as we need it to be done. Okay. So after the box talk, Jace will go to the job site, and he'll talk to the contractors, call contractors. You know, I'll go off and I'll go look at properties or I'll call up realtors or, you know, make sure that our deals are closing, you know, whatever that may be, whether it's, you know, it's a wholesale that we have to move forward or, a, you know, rehab or whatever, if we're doing auction or whatever source it's coming from, moving those forward and then, you know, you can, you can tell me what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, sure. So I, I'm always keeping a pulse on our private money, making sure that we've got the financing in place for the deals we've committed to, uh, you know, keeping our investor relationships. We want to keep everyone very bought in to our company. Mm -hmm. uh, we do regular investor updates. Hey, how, how is your individual investment doing and how are we doing as a whole, as a company? Um, that's a really important, you know, uh, part of our business. So making sure that's going well and then doing design work on our property. So. Um, coming up with scopes of work, selecting materials, uh, that's the part that I studied and have an interest in and, you know, have a very a good pulse on what our end product is going to look like. That That's awesome. Yeah, I, so so your team is mo like comprised of mostly the three of you, right? So. Yeah, our house team. And obviously, we, we have a lot of realtor relationship, banks, our attorney, all of the, the auxiliary components as well. Okay, yeah. And I love that you you put so much attention to um, you know not just finding private money and, and, and building relationship with the private lender, but like keeping them updated on an ongoing basis, checking mm -hmm. in on how their investments are going, checking in how you know uh, they see that you are you know you are doing. Um, that's really awesome. It's super smart. Yeah. Uh, you okay. Yeah, you cut out for just a second there, Tim. Yeah. So I, I was saying I love how you put so much attention and focus on the uh, private uh, private lender side, right? To continue to 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 build relationship with private lenders and checking in on how the investments are going, check in how they see you are, you know how how they see they are doing with you, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah, that's a, a lot of investors don't do that. Like don't make that as a major part of their business. Yeah. Right. 
I think it's all about just keeping that excitement, right? I mean, whenever you're talking to someone, you're trying to sell someone on something, you know, you're excited, you're you know, energetic, and, and that's how you sell them, right? You know, but what's what's after the sale, right? right. You know, keep excited, keeping them engaged. Um, that's super important, especially if you want, you know, a 10, 20 year relationship with some of these investors. We want them to invest more, and we want to make them more money and make us more money. So. Mm -hmm. And one of the other tips that we have there, you know, a lot of our new private money has come from our previous investors where they're referring their friends, their coworkers, in a lot of cases their, their boss or, you know, someone with access to even more funds. Um, and we always make sure that that's taken care of. You know, we're, we're offering 1% referral right now. So if someone brings a friend on board with $100,000, they're getting a $1,000 check the day. Nice. Um, that creates a lot of buy-in and it gets people excited about talking to their friends, sharing what we're doing. And a lot of pride as well in our work. You know, they're they're able to drive around. They're able to show their friends the properties that their money is turning around and communities that they're revitalizing. You know, we have investors that come from even like Denver and Milwaukee, which are hours away. They come through Des Moines just because they know that we're here and they want to be able to see where their money's being put into play. Yeah, we've gotten uh, I think presents presents from most of our investors. We've gotten yeah. cigars from one, some Patagonia clothes, whiskey, <laughs> whiskey, uh, custom else? pants, custom pants, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, it's that, fun. dude, that is like a super, super good tip right there. Uh, that's that's strong. I've never, yeah. I mean, you you guys are going way above and beyond in how you are raising your money, how you're finding people, paying referral fees, giving them gifts and presents. Dude, that's <laughs> awesome. Super smart. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So cool. So so um, so you know. Like to me, all entrepreneurs are heroes, right? Heroes because of our commitment for our family, our staff, you know, the people that we work out, our contractors, our subcontractors, our clients, our buyers, our agents, right? Um, you know, do you guys see yourself as a hero? <laughs> you know, I don't know that we've ever used the term hero. Uh, I do like that and, and you know, I, I'm glad that you used that term, but I think for us, it's really motivating to see that ripple effect where, like you said, the, the work that we're doing and the energy that we put into our business, it impacts more than just our personal lives. Obviously, we want to be successful personally, but we're creating jobs, we're revitalizing communities, we're pumping a lot of money into, into targeted areas, um, and we're able to see that impact very quickly. And so that, that ripple effect is hugely motivating for us. We're, we're putting food on the table for other people. Um, and, and I guess in that respect, yeah, we are, as real estate investors, we're a hero in some sense. That's awesome, yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool to like, just reflect and, and think on you know, all the things that you've been able to accomplish personally, but even more importantly, like Brian said, the, the ripples. I mean, I can, I'm just thinking on all the contractors that we've worked with, all the realtors. You know, we've made them a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and we've made money, obviously, in the course of that as well, but mm -hmm. thinking what we've been able to put together, uh -huh. Taking a house that looks like crap, and, and making it a house that everybody's you know bidding up and chasing chasing uh, to try to get that last bid um, is is super special. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, so we you know I I, I came up with an, the acronym for the word hero, and it stands for heart's core entrepreneur uh, who believes in getting rich by enriching others, and that's exactly what you guys are doing. So uh, perfect. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I'm I mean, a hero it, then. <laughs> I love how the, the focus is on others, you know, because the, the good things will flow your way when you're reciprocating and you're, you're putting out there what you want to receive back and you're, you're taking care of the other people surrounding you and making sure that they're treated well. You know, that, that's how people become successful and how people, you know, ultimately accomplish their goals. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, guys, well, we're going to wrap up this interview now and, um, you know, you have given so much to everyone listening, right, and watching now and later. Um, how, if they want to get a hold of you or learn more about what you do, your business, um, you know, number one, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, and then number two, um, are there any resources uh, that you guys might be looking for that perhaps you know the viewers can uh, can support you with, right? So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, well, first of all, our website is rallycapproperties.com. That's rallycap with a P, like a baseball hat. And uh, we use Facebook quite a bit as well, so rallycap properties on Facebook. Both of those are great ways to reach out to us. Um, and, you know, in terms of our, our wants right now, 
you know, I think we're, we're always trying to be at the cutting edge of business and making sure that we're, you know, pushing technology and pushing creative ideas. And, and so really across the spectrum in real estate investing, if there's a new technology or a new strategy that someone's implementing, we want to be hearing about those and testing them out. Because, you know, now is as good a time as any to, to just try as many things as we possibly can early on in our business. Right. Yeah. I think, you know, what Ryan alluded to earlier is, you know, we're trying to help as many people out as possible. So if your listeners, you know, if there's anything we can do for your listeners, um, like this interview and anything else, um, definitely reach out to us. If there's anything that your listeners think that we can find value in, we'd obviously love to entertain any, anything and everything. Um, so yeah, we're always open to conversations to talking to, to new to new people and networking. And, you know, if there's anything we can do, we'd love to do it. Awesome, awesome guys. All right, so uh, one last thing. What uh, is, you know, what is the one thing you want to leave everyone with? Either some inspiration or some encouragement or anything, like one thing that you want to leave everyone with. I would say my words of advice are, or, you know, motto is, you know, work, work really hard and the luck just falls in place. You know, if you're going to work your butt off, um, things will just happen. I mean, just be confident that if you work really, really hard, things just fall into place. It's really weird how it works. Um, but the harder you work, the more things just kind of lay out in front of you. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for this interview. Really appreciate you. I'm sure the viewers appreciate you as well. Uh, with that, happy investing. Talk to you guys later. Right. Thanks, Tim. Hey, thanks so much, right. Tim. See you guys.